can do CTOs. And there are lots of problems that people run into. The key is with you know, us sharing knowledge and doing a lot of this stuff, we do know that there are solutions. And it definitely takes a lot of patience and training for us to be good in CTOs. So uh, <laughs> one of the first things that people often deal with is dealing with the proximal cap. So the way I've kind of structured this whole talk is to uh, come up with some scenarios and um, give some solutions, but also uh, you know, occasionally throw in some cases. So proximal cap challenges is one of the first, you know, the, the, the bottom line is you got to have good backup. CTO PCI and proximal cap, it's all about backup. I mean, I still see people use wimpy guides like a JL4 for a left side CTO should almost, the answer is almost never. Um, use guides with good backup and, and use strategies to improve the backup, right? Either if you want to amplify the guide, use guide extension catheters, anchor balloons, whatnot. Uh, there are some other strategies such as scratch and go where you're essentially bypassing the cap. Where you, uh, there's another one called base power knuckle. I'll kind of show you that in a second. Uh, Carlino, which is like really hydraulically dissecting it, lacing on contrast on the tip of the wire, which again, um, you know, uh, laser has kind of gone out of vogue here. It's just kind of making a resurgence. We used it a fair bit in the US, but um, you know, again, once you're comfortable enough, you could do these more aggressive intervals. of all its fails called retrograde. So amplifying the guide just means really deep throating the guide and making it a little bit more amplat C so that you get better backup, guide extension catheters, we all know that. Now, using an anchor balloon, which again, most of you guys have seen umpteen times. So kind of not waste time on all this. Base essentially is nothing but balloon assisted subintimal entry, where what you're doing is actively dissecting the vessel proximally. So size it one to one, inflate the balloon, and, and, you know, balloon angioplasty really works on creating dissections. Have a microcatheter wedge to the side and, and then use, uh, I mean, typically an XT or a Pilot 200 for what we use. You've, you've now gone into the subintimal space. You've kind of, you know, jailed the, the, the microcatheter with the one-to-one -one balloon, which has also created the dissection, push really hard, the wire forms a knuckle, and you're in the vessel architecture. All right? So that's... Uh, balloon assisted uh, subintimal entry. Scratch and go. Again, if you're really comfortable with microcatheter manipulation and using stiff wires, oftentimes we use the Confiance of Pro 12 or the Confiance Pro 12 for this. Uh, use a wire, um, or take a microcatheter, penetrate the proximal cap, get, you know, ever so gently, very carefully get your microcatheter to the tip of the uh, wire, pull that out, and then oftentimes this is followed by a knuckle. And uh, moving forward. Okay, Carlino is just, okay, I'm just gonna go back. Sorry, just skip two there. Okay, Carlino, and I'll have better pictures of this, essentially is when you dissect, dissect um, with contrast through a microcatheter. Laser, again, the, the, the key is many times you, 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 you sit on the proximal cap with a laser, go 80-80. Um, if you have Elka, Turbo Elite, whatever you're using, uh, we tended to use, I mean, again, this is off-label, but most of what we do in CTOs is off-label, the peripheral catheter because it has 30% more fibers and there's no on-off. So kind of, kind of, you can really hit harder. But the whole idea is for you to laze, create some kind of a cap with the cavitation effect, create enough for channel, and then you can oftentimes follow that with either wire or um, other devices. And... Uh, yeah, all else fails go retrograde. It's kind of self-explanatory, so I'll keep going. Once again, when you don't, we talked about the impenetrable proximal cap. There's another problem. The proximal cap is ambiguous, meaning you have no idea where to go. So option one, if you follow hybrids, go retrograde. If not, um, another option, which is what APCTO algorithm tells you, is use an IVAS guided puncture. And I'll show you some cases of this, where you put, put your IVAS in a side branch, identify where the proximal cap is, penetrate. Scratch and go, we just talked about that. Base pop and we talked about that. So these are ways to bypass it, go a little bit more proximal, get into the vessel architecture, cross the, the branch. And if all else fails, again, sometimes you do need a CT to help delineate the anatomy. So again, in the interest of time and keeping uh, brevity, I'm gonna kind of skip it. We all know how to go retrograde. Um, IVIS proximal cap, again, I think if you're gonna do CTOs, you really should know how to use IVIS. Um, and other imaging modalities. So the key is um, put, put put your IVAS catheter, a, a shot tip catheter often is very useful for this. Um, it can help identify the proximal cap, then penetrate. Many times you do use a dual lumen catheter for this, and I'll show you a case of this very shortly. 
So crossing the CTO segment. So this is a problem um, that we sometimes have, right? Wire ends up subintimal. You have crossed it, but the wire is subintimal. So what do you do? So this is a case I did in India maybe a year or two ago. Uh, post bypass, uh, Lima is gone. The graph to the uh, circ is okay. Um, and again, if you, um, I'm gonna, you can kind of see it in the RAO uh, cranial view on the right side. That's the distal part and the proximal part. So it's pretty long. Um, you know where the proximal cap is. Collaterals are not really promising. It's through an, it's an epicardial through a graft into the circ and then back into the LED. So it wouldn't be my first choice. Um, and the proximal cap is discrete. So my plan really was, I'm gonna go do anterior dissection reentry. That's a microcatheter followed by a wire initially to penetrate. Again, that's a, uh, it's probably a Conquest Pro 12. Once it penetrated, right? The next step really is for me to get the microcatheter to the tip of that. And again, I'm just gonna skip through this a little bit. Then exchange for an XT, which is often what I use for knuckling. There, that's a knuckle, knuckle, knuckle. Nothing elegant about it, but it works. It's in the architecture of the vessel. And I, how do I know that? I just injected retrograde and it's dancing with the vessel. So you're in the architecture, all right? So now more knuckle, I'm all set for um, using a, a stingray and it really took a lot of force to get the knuckle going, as you can see. Um, in fact, I finished it up with the boss, but interestingly, we didn't have a stingray balloon available. So now what are your options, right? You can either go retrograde or you can do what we used to do before, sting, uh, before the stingray balloon came about, which is take a dual lumen catheter or not. I did use a dual lumen catheter here and, and uh, did essentially parallel wire. That's the uh, wire going in, confirm position. As you can see, that's dual lumen catheter and this is the second wire in there and uh, confirm position again, exchange for a workhorse wire, final result. So the key is sometimes you do, when you're subintimal, you do have to take a second wire. You gotta be good in wiring. You gotta do pedal wiring. I've already shown you knuckling. knuckling. It's gotten a lot of bad press in the Asia Pacific region, um, but even in the APCT algorithm, typically if something is difficult to wire, that's the bottom line. Uh, if it's long, calcified, tortuous, prior unsuccessful wiring by an expert, ambiguous course of vessel, consider knuckling. Um, here is a case that I did in China. Uh, and again, this is retrograde, but the principles still remain. So the anti-grade wire is coming down. The, 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 the retrograde microcatheter and anti-grade wire seem to be super far. And this is a, a radial femoral approach, I think. Uh, so retrograde knuckle, again, if you look at it, it's going somewhere else. I was really not comfortable with the anatomy. There was no CT up front. And, and I'm like, where is this going? So this is where, I mean, I actually did what we call a Carlino. So again, that's the course of the vessel, right? And now once, now I'm in the game. So now I could, the wire, the knuckle actually was going in the right way. So I got an anti-grade knuckle, followed up with a microcatheter. I already have a retrograde microcatheter. And, and now, you know, it's, it's essentially a guide extension reverse card. So microcatheter over the knuckled wire, anti-grade. And uh, essentially at this point, you can see the guide extension catheter is kind of straightened out the vessel. Uh, and here, guide extension catheter, balloon, it's a uh, guide liner or a guidezilla, guide extension reverse card, essentially. Retrograde wire into the anti-grade guide extension catheter. That's the final result. Uh, so <clears throat> this was a wire, uh, this was again another live, uh, this was actually a live case that I uh, scrubbed with one of the experts from Japan. Um, and I'm just gonna go back to show you uh, what this vessel is about. So we identified the proximal cap, um, got in, it's a, it's a CERC CTO, um, tried, wire for a while. And again, you know, we're two experts, two different philosophies, um, but unfortunately couldn't really wire this. Um, although again, you know, between the two of us, we've done a ton of CTOs, uh, but again, not every wire, not every CTO can be wired. That's really the message that I want to get across. Collaterals, unsuccessful. 
the wires nowhere close. We were out of transmission time after an hour and a half or whatever. So finally kind of agreed to knuckle. So the that's a microcatheter, a knuckle. Now you're in the vessel architecture, okay? Now you, once you've done that, get the microcatheter down, put in a stiff wire that the two dots that you see there, that's the stingray balloon coming down. And then again, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna go, there it is, boom, you're there. And uh, so here is what we're dealing with. Uh, this is a CERC OMCTO. Um, and that's the wrong view on the left side and the correct view, you wanna see one line and two dots. And then essentially uh, did a, sorry, just kind of ran through, I'm gonna go back, okay. So 30 minutes after we decided to knuckle, ended up doing a blind stick and drive with a Conquest Pro 12. So once you're there, we're still not done. Exchange for a workhorse wire, always. So that's the microcatheter. Exchange for a workhorse wire. Put in the dual lumen catheter via the second branch. Confirm on IBIS at, at 12 to 1 o'clock. You can see that you're in the true lumen. Here again, you're in the true lumen. Further down, you'll see you were false. That's false lumen. You can see the compressed true lumen uh, around 6 o'clock. And more proximally, we have a true lumen again. And so this ended up being a uh, true, false, true, but again, got both branches. Uh, okay, so sometimes, again, I maybe will take another five minutes. So um, again, a little bit more about knuckling can help you. Different wires can form different knuckles. Understand how to make a knuckle, what wire makes what knuckle. That's a separate talk by itself. So I'm gonna keep going. Um, and, and I'm gonna skip this because in the Asia Pacific region, especially I think in Bangladesh and India, I mean, other than very few operators and mostly when I'm around, we don't do much of ADR. So I'm gonna skip the problem solving for ADR per se, unless someone has specific questions and we can take that at the end of the talk. Uh, so I'm not talking about ADR problem solving here. Um, so again, straw is something if you have hematoma, but now this is, again, I do know that there are some retrograde operators. So, I think it's important to know which microcatheters are torqueable and which are not. So uh, understand um, that Corsair actually torques better counterclockwise, but you got to go a couple of rotations, like, you know, typically five to ten counterclockwise, then go clockwise. Turnpike, once we get that, uh, does better clockwise, just based on how the the you know the the braids themselves are. Um, and if microcatheter, if let's say you cross the collateral and things don't really work, again, basics are enhanced support. If it's a septal, you can balloon the, the track. Uh, always try a different microcatheter. If it's small, if all its fails, take a different collateral. Some, I mean, and obviously you can enhance the pull if you're trapped the wire, if you've already crossed it. And uh, snaring is another thing that many times has come to uh, save me. And I think most of us should know how to do that. This again was a case from a few years ago and Ostial RCA, um, done in a foreign lab again. Uh, so as you can see, super calcified, right coronary vessel, uh, cross the collateral here was great. I mean, this was truly flush ostium. I had nothing to go anti-grade. So there's only one way you got to go retrograde true to true. So once this was done, uh, managed to penetrate this, I think I needed an Astata 820 or a Con um, Conquest 820 as we call it here. Uh, once this was done, right? Gonna let this play. So once you've penetrated this, the key, and, and I see this mistake done, uh, you wanna conform in two positions. Um, one of the key things that I tell people is do not snare a stiff wire. I see this done, it's gonna just get you into trouble someday or another. So once it's done, switch, snare the wire that you're gonna externalize. Typically, again, an RG3 here, that's the wire going up. And once this is done, I actually ended up snaring this in the descending iota. I mean, typically the great vessels were great. Keep moving. In fact, we realized they didn't have a snare, but you should know how to make a snare. So that's a, another problem solving thing. There you see it get into the GR4. And once it's done, I mean, the rest of it, again, I won't belabor the point. It was fairly straightforward. Get the microcatheter, reseat the guide, finish your PCI. Okay. Um, Guys, how many more minutes do I have, moderators? Am I out of time? Uh, I can get to the conclusion slide or I can show you more problem solving.
Yeah, I think you can proceed. Okay. okay. It, it is, it yeah. is only, uh, 13, 14 minutes. Uh, 13 minutes is uh, passed away, so you need to finish in quick time, actually. All right, good, perfect. Just wanted to get an idea. So that's, that's all great. Uh, so what I'll do is just kind of really briefly talk about one other problem that people have, which is you've crossed, you've done all the dirty work and now you can't connect. So failing in reverse cut, right? So once you're here, typically, why does this happen? Many reasons. You know, you're not in the same space, it's super large and there's some other solutions. And again, this is a, a slide that was made popular by Dr. Sumit Suji, but many, 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 many times. One of the simplest solutions is make the space bigger. I'm not, in the interest of time, I'm not talking about it, extended reverse card and contemporary and whatnot, but many times dilating on the anti-grid wire is going to solve the solution. I mean, uh, provide the solution, okay? So uh, this is courtesy my good friend, Stefan Brinfred. So again, this kind of a really cool cartoon, but the idea is make the space bigger anti-grade and then boom, you get it, okay? So a larger balloon many times will help you. Um, and again, don't get dogmatic on where you wanna do it, move it around, move your base uh, of operations so that you can get better re-entry. Uh, again, in the interest of time, I'm gonna just skip all this, but the idea is don't get vetted on, I'm gonna do re-entry right here, okay? Again, use IWIS to understand where the various things are. I mean, there's no substitute for this. So you got to understand imaging pretty well. And the one other thing, which I think, unless it's truly osteum, use guide extension reverse cards because it makes life a lot simpler because sometimes you might make the connection, but then again, go sub -intimal. So that again, you know, takes care of that problem. So uh, I'm gonna not talk about some of the other problems. Again, see, uh, this could be an entire hour's talk. So I'm gonna essentially go to my conclusion slide here, which is, you know, many, many times you are gonna have challenges, have a plan. In fact, what I didn't show you today was typically you always wanna know, okay, I've studied the vessel. I'm going to start off with this strategy. If this doesn't work, I'm going to do this. If this doesn't work, I'm going to do this. So I, I think, you know, really there are elegant solutions for a lot of the problems that we face. Not planning is essentially planning to fail and be ready to switch strategies. Thank you very much. Thanks for your attention. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Dr. Kalan Sundaram for your nice but brief deliberation on this uh, topic. Uh, uh, I would uh, like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Mahbub Rahman to carry on with the moderation. Dr. Mahbub, please. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Khalid Mohsin Bhai. Uh, uh, so actually we are uh, running out of uh, time. So we can invite a few questions from the panelists or for the chairpersons for Dr. Orun Sundaram. Any questions? Uh, I, I have a question. If uh, uh, if not any other questions uh, from panelists, because I am not. Yes, I, I have a. Uh, I have a question, yeah. please. Okay, please can go I ask, ahead. Can I ask a question? Yeah, please okay, go well. ahead. Doctor uh, Varun, congratulations next time for your excellent presentation. I have a very simple question. Uh, what is your success rate on uh, during uh, dealing with C two P C I and and do you feel any or any complication rate of your in any or facing any dreadful situation while dealing with them, this type of source of cases? Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. No, I think that's a great question, right? I mean, it's always um, you want to balance efficacy and safety. So the, the short answer is my own numbers. I mean, I've, I've actually, you know, the last that I checked, I'm well north of 2000 CTOs um, and I've done it in a fair number of countries at this point. Uh, my goal, especially because I used to travel to a lot of foreign labs was to keep complication rates to a minimum because I mean, you know, I'm going to be out and then someone's got to deal with this. So uh, typically, I mean, I would say unselected, like without cherry picking cases, uh, it's well north of 93, 94% or higher. Um, and again, my, what I'm even more happy about is my complication rate is well less than 1%, which is actually lower than the registries, because I think the biggest lesson that we as CT operators want to learn and know 
is knowing when to stop. It doesn't, I mean, you know, there are times when I, in fact, I didn't show you some of the cases. Well, you know, you can wire collateral, but you really want to be sure. Do I really want to run the risk of an epicardial perf? Because I can doesn't mean I should. And I think each of us, right, we need to know our, the patient. Are we doing it in the patient's best interest? Our own skill sets? Are you, and, and again, you know, sometimes you are going to have a complication. Are you willing to deal with it? Do you have the skill set? Does your lab acute? I think these are all questions that we constantly need to assess during the case and then make a decision. I have a small question, uh, if you permit me. Actually, uh, do you do DSC, the vitamin stress eco, routinely before uh, doing CTO? Another question is, I know you, there, you, you are actually master up, especially of CTO cases, and in your experience, improvement, status of improvement of LV ejection fraction after CTO PCI in your experience. So actually, you, you know that uh, every time we do not do uh, CTO due to our lack of hardware. So right. uh, in your experience, actually. No, I, I think, again, you know, this, this really goes back to the basics. Why do we do what we do, right? Um, in, in patients with low EF, if there's viability, you know, whether you want to use DSC, whether you want to use, um, you know, cardiac MR or PET, depending on what is, what's the best that you guys have there, um, I would highly, uh, you know, urge you to know that the territory is not infarcted before you go ahead and do it. If that territory is dead and gone, then there is no point in going and opening a CTO. But... If you have viable tissue, typically after restoring flow, EF does improve. And and I mean, in, you know, from, um, you know, sometimes I do get follow up on patients. Like, you know, people are like, hey, we, we did this EF, low EF patient. And like, no, now they are like 45, 50. And my own database, like, you know, we have had good success. The key is not going after dead myocardium. Yeah, Dr. Rurun, Mao Bhai, I have a question. Sure. Hmm? Yeah, Dr. Rorun, can yep. you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm, I, I'm Professor Khan. Pleasure. So I know very. <laughs> so you, you know that a, a, still a, a WE is one of the preferable options for uh, the CTO PCI about sixty to seventy percent. And right. what I have what I have seen by your talk that you love knuckling. You love knuckling, so uh, so in in that case, and also sometimes I also love luck, knuckling. So, but uh, the problem is here that while doing a knuckling, and some of the worst can knuckle very well, but some of the worst can't knuckle well. If you try to knuckle it, then it usually goes. To, it usually injures the suboptimal, uh, intimal, uh, or intima a little bit along its whole length. Into the uh, into the normal vessel distally. So how uh, uh, how much knuckling you you can prefer that uh, because it, if it it goes beyond the vessel dimension the knuckling, then it creates problem distally sometimes. And which wares you really love AWE in AWE which where you like to love knuckling if you don't uh, pre-plan for ADR or something. So, so typically, uh, no, the, uh, again, great question. And again, unfortunately, we are kind of short on time. So I'll try to keep it brief yet answer your question. Uh, so yes, while I am okay with knuckling, I do believe that wire skill sets, and th that's really the point I've kind of made during the first case, you have to be a good wire operator before you take on the other stuff. Knuckling is just a way to go from point A to point B in the CTO body itself, right? So think of it that way. Um, whether you anti-grade knuckle or retrograde knuckle doesn't really matter. Some wires, regardless of, I mean, some lesions, regardless of how good an operator you are, are just not doable. I mean, like the, the case that I showed you where we ended up doing ADR was, I mean, I don't want to name who the other person was, but was one of the very, very well-respected Japanese CTO operator. And two hours, just couldn't wire it. I don't think anybody could have. It just, you know, you needed a different strategy. So my point is, Yes, those cases that you can wire, absolutely, you have to wire. Now, going back to the, uh, the second question, uh, traditionally, we used to knuckle XTs. Uh, we can knuckle mm -hmm. uh, pilots. Uh, we have a dedicated wire, Mongo, which is available in the US, not yet in India, which, which is more designed for knuckling, uh, forms a more controlled knuckle. Um, and to kind of just elaborate on the whole thing, any wire, and again, I'm going to repeat this, any wire, including Gaia, Conquest Pro 12 can be knuckled, but I'm not advocating that you start knuckling Conquest, all right? So yeah, there are times, 
no, 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 not for mm-hmm. people. You yeah. got to be really comfortable with knuckles. Know how to knuckle. What's a good knuckle? No, not to mm-hmm. talk. There's an entire talk on knuckling. Do's, don'ts. What do you do? When is a knuckle not a good knuckle? How do you reshape a knuckle? So I, I wish it could, I could make it. It is still not as difficult as wiring, believe me. But uh, I would start off with XTs. And uh, once Mongo is there, go for a Mongo. And I think uh, I first is knuckling well. Some... But that's not yeah. your start. You don't want to start learning how mm-hmm. to knuckle with Gaia first. Yeah. Go for an XT. It knuckles a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you, guys. As we are running short of time. There is, this talk has provoked a lot of questions, I think. But uh, unfortunately, we are unable to take any more questions. Let's move on to the next topic. Uh, next presentation will be by Professor M.G. Azam, and he will be uh, presenting CTO anti-grade approach, case-based. Uh, so over to the Professor M.G. Azam. Can you hear me? Yeah, respected moderators? Yeah, yes, Adam, you please proceed on. Okay. Thank you very much. You know, uh, we are still one hour leg behind our program. So I will try to skip a lot of slides because try to maintain the pace of our program. And today's my talk about art of CTO. Actually, a lot of things are covered by Dr. Arun very nicely and a question answer session. Dr. Mustazon nicely raised a question. Why LB function improving? Are they improved or not? I think I will give you the satisfactory, satisfactory answer. And like a painting, art of CTO is like a painting. Actually, it is a art. Like painting, holding the brush as taught by your professor or your mentor, listen to, you should listen to your engineers, understand and respect your structure of the guiders. And actually, in a, according to Mustafa Zaman, why we should open the fluid vessel and, but what is the justification to leave the vessel closed? As you see, there the evidence, explore study, it uh, shows it is improved LB function. So we should open our CTOs as well as it is in, reduced. It, it is reduced our angina frequency and also reduce the consequences of the acute coronary syndrome events, even reduce arrhythmia and further need of CAVG. Overall, you know, 27 tons nitrates are overused in all over the world, so we can reduce nitrates as well. And from the intervention cardiologist's point of view, we help the patient and we should improve our PCI skill. And I am not to offer CTOPCI, you know, when you think you may harm the patient and as because of complications, then you should not offer the CTOPCI and also failure of procedure if you think the chance of failure rate is high, lack of real benefit successful procedures or early target basic failure, then you should not offer the CTOPCI. But actually, you know, in our daily practice around 20% pressure. Under CTO, if we open CTO, uh, what does it mean? What does it help us? Actually, you know, if you look, it is an open uh, CTO registry. It improves our quality of life. Uh, according to the shows, if you open the CTO, then shared to angina questionnaire score improve and rose Disney scale score reduced and patient health quality score reduced. So overall patient quality of life improved by reducing angina frequency, improved physical activities and quality of life. So we should open CTO. There's a common myth, actually it's rare, actually it is not rare. And you know, 20% of the case are CTOs. All CTOs should open. Integrated approach is the always preferable approach or best approach. As you know, every every technique has unique indication for the, for the clinical scenario. C2P say of no benefit, always expensive to open. And what is the reality of the, in our daily practice, it is a long procedure time, long contrast, large contrast volume, uh, significant radiation dosing, cost of course, multiple guide, IRs, balloons, and stents may required. It may make us difficult. So if you look at the stepwise algorithm of CTO management, if we think this is the assess the compatibility, assess the relations, collaterals, and risk benefit and justify the approach, either we go, go for integrated oil escalation or integrated description reentry or retrograde oil escalation. As you know, Orun very nicely elaborate integrated description rate, uh, <coughs> reentry case and also retrograde case. And we should discuss later on selection of the proper hardware. 
if you look how we as the competitivity experience team work should be needed by whom a skill catlet team should be evaluate the situ procedures and how long it should be at least maintained 15 to 30 minutes and how we can evaluate we should go for proximal cap ambiguity lesion land quality of distal versus and collaterals then you should consider it is not a ad hoc basis it should be elective procedures then you go for uh, assess the lesions you see if you go for dual injection and you see dual injection can give us the significant insight of the lesion length size of the location segment of the artery distal to the cto for evaluating whether there is significant bifurcation of the distal cap as you know proximal and distal cap is very important to penetrate your ir and can reveal uh, presence size and twisted of the collaterals it may which may guide you which technique you should adopt and for deciding on optimal situ pc strategy so you see if you give a single injection you can't answer all questions like proximal cap length and distal vessel quality collaterals present or not and overall you can assess the jct score dual injection can give a reasonable solution so you can assess the the proximal cap ambiguity length of the lesions and distal vessel quality and you can comment on collaterals good collaterals or not finally you can assess the jct score or progressivity score you can assess then you go for that next if you go for the as the collateral it is very important if you have a good collateral that you can approach retrograde approach you see if you have the collaterals good collateral that you can think if you are not able to success first integrated approach then you can consider retrograde if it fail then you also again go for integrated and integrated resection reentry approach and if you assess the risk of the patient benefit of the patient definitely we should treat the patient not the lesion so we should assess the patient first with the symptoms whether the patient have likely to coronary disease or not you can assess by microbial perfusion imaging and microbial and microbial function and ct locations also sometimes you may need ct scan or cardiac mr then you go for progress ct score as because you know How, what is the process of success? If you know the progressivity score, the low progressivity score is the more procedural, uh, procedural chance of success. And if you go for JCT score, uh, if it is very high, then it may give you a clue for you go for retrograde approach. Then you should consider the progressivity or complication score. If you estimate where the higher chance of complication, you should take measure how you can approach your cases. So, if you look at this slide, chronic total occlusion assessment of the patient, integrated vasculation, integrated dissection reentry, and retrograde. Definitely, every technique has own indication, but commonly in our daily practice, we should go for most of the cases integrated vasculation technique. But progress CT score is as low as progress CT score. You can able to predict integrated vasculation is the best best option, but if progress CT score is very high, then you should consider retrograde process, retrograde success rate is not too much so you should consider high integrate other either integrate or integrated resection reentry approach so integrated resection is safe as with the least complication if you see the overall integrated resection is in terms of good in case of mes and also complication like perforation in case of retrograde if you think mes overall mes death mi stroke and repeat reversion like pc and cbg is much more uh, in case of retrograde approach so, so dear colleague we should careful about our approach we should not be dogmatic i should go for the uh, retrograde or i should go for integrated dissection reentry approach but you just judicially which approach you are fit for your case then you should decide accordingly then you go for jct score it is simplified score you can see it and if you look at this uh, right side slide if you see the jct score jct is low jct score integrated success rate is very high if jct is very high then retrograde approach is the preferable approach or integrated dissection reentry approach may be suitable alternatives but justify your approach either integrated escalation or integrated dissection reentry or retrograde uh, there is the several learning stages as you know stage 1 we should go for integrate and if you go for second time you go for integrate if you go for third time you go for integrate then do if you know then you go for integrate discussion reentry or retrograde approaches so i think we should prefer first integrate then we should go for integrate discussion reentry or retrograde anyway 
And this is the simplified algorithm. As you know, just if you consider primary integral approach, at least you should manipulation your guide. At least 20 minutes you can try. If it is success, then not success, then you can parallel technique or other intervascular inter ultrasound you can use for re entry. And this is the hybrid. I can show it, I can escape it. But integrated and versus integrated, there is no debate. But I think there is a, some sorts of advantage and disadvantage of the every approach, especially the retrograde. There is a skill is very, very high skill is required in case of lesion is success depends on the lesions in case of integrated and in case of channel, you give you success in the retrograde. But question is that angiogram is not perfect in the particularly CTO PCI information from IRA is also quite important to know about the lesions. So if you go for the selection of the hardware, proper hardware, you think you every cath lab have CTO setup, every cath lab have a lot of CTO wires, but I believe I, I believe a limited set of wires is required to perform those tasks in every cath lab. Not necessarily you have to have every every source of wires. So this is the C2 hardware. So you just see the just a step up approach. Whatever you choose, your hardware, but Support is very very much important, it's especially you can catheter. Sometimes you need balloon and microcatheter to give you good support. With the support, you can decide who is guide where you should approach. Then, if it is simplified algorithm, how to take your decision? If you know the CTO land, definite CTO land, then you can take Gaia series or Conquest. If you don't know, then you go for pilot. And for crossing of the collaterals, you can go for Sion or Fielder or Pilot 50 or for acceleration RG3. This is the simplified algorithm for selection of the proper guardian. The more penetration force is required when you should increase your tip load. Then in that particular situation, you should choose either the taper tip or blunt tip. Then that will help you a lot. Either you go for puncture or drilling method. Then you see the then air should be needed in a toolbox, but not necessarily every air should be present in your cath labs. But I don't escape it, keep shape, I know it. And this is the important slide, c 2 pca high risk anatomy for guiders, especially if you see the ambiguity, classification, and toxicity, there is a high chance of perforations. If you see at the distal cap at perforation, loss, the loss of side branch and donor vessel disease, donor vessel injury may cause closure, upstream target vessel disease, calcium, slow progress, dissection, perforation can be happened. This is the most important thing, IR escalation technique, actually how we station our IR. If you think go for sliding, then if you think there is a micro channel, then you should consider filter XT or pilot like that. And if you think drilling or penetration, then your higher tip load you should consider. If you think post record prog, then you should consider Gaia, Gaia family. And if you look at the case, moderator, can you tell me whether I am taking five minutes or 10 minutes? Or how much more? Five minutes uh, will be okay. I think. Okay, I I I I I will back to you in two minutes. Okay, I promise you. This is fifty years, fifty five years male. This is the CCS class three angina, and you see the patient diabetes hypertension LBA fifty eight percent, JCT score two, and progress CT score one, progress CT compression score one. So, if we consider of this patient, the proximal cap is tapered, the length is twenty. 20 millimeter and good caliber, but collateral is not good. Calcification is absent. So how we approach? We just approach the field XT. We just uh, down the field XT or exchange the round throw and pre-dilate by two into 15 balloon. Then we go for straight to standing by deploying the drag looting stand and post dilate. And this is our final result. Slide is move. Slide is move, not moving. Sorry. Okay. 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 So this is the post dilatation. This is the final result. And this is the second case, you know. This is the 40th male attempt LCX C2 PCI two weeks back, and his JCT score was three, and probably JCT score was three. Initially, he was treated RCA 99% lesion. Then they tried to approach the LCX CTO, but they failed. Then came to our center. Then we can approach after two weeks, and the pigment cap was tapered. Lesion length was more than 20 millimeter. Distal vessel was good caliber, 
and collateral also intervention septal collateral absent very linear at least class 1 on the classification 1 so calcification present proximal dissection present so we approached it cqr gaia second access with the cn blue and pre dilatation and we deployed a 2.75 into 33 mm stand and post dilate by 3.5 into by 10 stand you see this is the result final result i think you must appreciate it this is our final case and this is also led hostel cto and patient jc cross 3 and progress cto cross 3 and progress cto complication cross 3 and we just crossing the lesion with balloon support by gaia second you just see the tip tip of the uh, oir is moving that means we are in the lumen with the support of balloon then we go we negotiate the balloon and pre dilate and access the oir then we deployed a led stent 2.7 to 38 mm drag looting stent and post dilated and this is our final result so they are calling in my take home message which operator needs to be experienced and adaptable not in the ir puncture push deflect torque drilling sliding surfing knuckling are essential maneuver to master in c2 pci i must mention and acknowledge to professor saidur rahman khan as asked a question knuckling is a good technique especially for safety reason but we should remember we should not use the oir like other than other than fielder and pilot because you can do everything by knuckling it is a game i must appreciate but don't we should play a game very dangerous game if you consider gaia or conquest pro or confluenza that will make a catastrophe so we should remember we should not play a game or if this all still now all literature not permitted only permitted for fielder and pilot can be knuckling i think i uh, dr arun also appreciate with me or agree with me and also dr ramesh dagabuti also here i think he also acknowledge with me and finally i can say use the same oil frequently instead of experimenting with a new oil for his cases cases to open a seat is always tough but it is tougher when you fail to make a proper plan however i can say finally in the same tone with dr arun when you fail to prepare when you fail to prepare you are preparing to fail so dear colleagues thank you very much for a wonderful session thank you very much i think i can i think complete with 12 minutes and 30 minutes okay thank you professor azam ji azam yes, yes. bit late uh, so as we are running behind schedule i like to have one of the chair persons to make a brief comment on this topic uh, i would like to request professor maximul haq would you like to make some comment on the talk of uh, professor mg azam professor maximul haq are you with us i don't think professor maxum is with me with us professor shams monwar would you like to say something i'm here i'm here oh yeah sir sorry sir uh, okay professor maxum would you would you like to make some brief comments about this lecture then we move to the next topic uh, yes i make a comment because we don't have enough time i cannot talk later on yeah. so short of time so i take this opportunity to make my comments to all uh, first thanking the organizers uh, professor fazul rahman and the mala team Ram Yazam for arranging the uh, nice home day virtual seminar, where I personally learned a lot of interesting and updated information on cardiovascular control, uh, intervention. And um, there were also cases from outside Dhaka. So I congratulate all our centers outside Dhaka who have taken up the responsibility of uh, doing complex cases with their limited resources. The, this presentation, I have, we, I have already had two lectures. I do not have enough experience in CTO. I think I was given to chair this session because of my seniority. 
Doc, by Dr. Kallan Sundaram was excellent. He's an operator which every cardiologist should dream of, young cardiologist especially. Professor M.G. Azum also gave an excellent talk from day six and beyond. But whatever I learned from the uh, procedures of CT over the years and my colleagues meaning um, is that I am also doing some integrated tests at some time. But if you are successful, it gives immense pleasure, which will last for a few days. But if you fail and fail with complications, it gives a few pain for the operator. And therefore, we should be very cautious in selecting cases and clinical indications should be there. Um, presence of viability is not a prerequisite for collateral development. And therefore, the collateral does not mean that the area is viable. And some of the younger colleagues uh, do uh, cases without the viability or specific indication that I have seen. So clinical symptoms in vagina, viability, large myocardial territory uh, supplied by the CTU and complete revitalization in patients with multiple symptoms are some of the indications. My feeling regarding CTU in a Bangladesh setting and working for a few years is that more complex lesions of angioplasty, uh, CTU or uh, angioplasty should be left for the gifted intervention cardiologist and to have or uh, experience in integrated and especially retrograde cases. Integrated cases can be done by uh, usual cardiologists like us and um, should have uh, enough experience with the uh, guide wires and catheters to use which to put for. Dual injection is necessary when we cannot see the distal vessel clearly from integrated injection. So dual integrated dual injection uh, should be uh, done more frequently. And um, uh, uh, this uh, procedure should not be done as has already been uh, said by an ad hoc basis. This should be done on a particular day in the early mornings and when you do, do not have locked 20 cases up front in your cath lab. So thank you again uh, for uh, the speakers and the upcoming speakers. I'll be listening to you. Thank you very much. Dr. Mahbub, can you please continue with the proceedings? Yes, uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, as we are uh, running behind the time, I think we can go to the next speaker. Our next speaker is Dr. Uh, Kaiser Nasrullah Khan. Uh, he was the uh, uh, Secretary General of BSCI, um, uh, so, and he's very energetic and uh, very integrated uh, interventional cardiologist. His topic is CTO retrograde case, tips and tricks. So Dr. may I request Dr. Kaiser Nasrullah Khan, please present your case. Dr. Babu, can I, can I add a few things? Because Dr. Kaiser Nasrullah Khan is the first uh, uh, operator in Bangladesh to do a solo uh, retrograde PCI. And probably he has got the highest number of retrograde PCI done in this country. So, and today he is his birthday as well. So I welcome him to present his uh, deliberation. Thank you. Mahabai, there is one correction yes. for our announcement. He is the immediate past general secretary general of BSCI, not president. Yeah, I told. No, no, no. I told. I, he yeah. was well. I, he, I told. Yeah. He oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Kaiser Nasrullah. Can Can you hear us, Dr. Nasrullah? Dr. Kaiser. Dr. Kaiser, can you unmute yourself? Dr. Kaiser? Am I audible? Yes, yes Kaiser. Um, uh, as Assalamu alaikum and good evening to all. Uh, it is really an honor to be here. My today's topic is CTO retrograde case tips and tricks. Uh, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks uh, to the BSA present committee as uh, uh, um, uh, president and secretary and scientific century. Uh, and, and the full committee for arranging such a wonderful webinar uh, so that we can learn from each other and treat our patients better. 
So uh, my today's topic is situ retrograde case tips and tricks. Okay, I, I would like to express my teacher, Professor H.K. Chaudhry, Dr. Monoar, Dr. Moin, and many more uh, doctors who laid their lives for uh, fighting as a frontline healthcare worker in this COVID uh, era. May Allah bless them Jannah. I have nothing to disclose. When to consider retrograde? One, proximal cap ambiguity. Number two, poor distal bed. Number three, bifurcation at distal cap. Number four, anti-grade failure. Number five, good interventional collateral. So basic principle of crossing CTO is very simple. You have to connect the proximal lumen and true lumen. And there's only two methods. One is true to true lumen by, by wire escalation or going through subtema by dissection re-entry. So if you understand this basic principle, it will be easier to do a CTO. So my today's agenda is follow. Uh, let's take one by one. First, using imaging modalities information. So you have to do the angiogram very carefully, dual injection, drop magnification, no panning, sequential injection, long acquisition, and multiple views to illustrate situ anatomy and collateral. Now like this is done with panning, which you can understand the collateral, but you should not do any panning so you can understand the collateral better for retrograde CTO uh, intervention. Then second agenda, build up appropriate system. So uh, these are the basic principles, puncture, approach site, catheter size shape, wiring support device. Approach site could be femoral, femororadial, radial radial. Guiding catheter is very important. Backup type guiding catheter for left XB, for RCL1 or 0.75, hockey stick, preferably seven or eight French, side hole to keep enough coronary flow, and should remember short guiding catheter for retro, 90 centimeter. The wire supporting device, Corsair, Microcatheter, turnpike, and dual lumen like crusade. So, this is a microcatheter corsair, also ch channel dilator from Ashahi. This is fine cross for Pteromo. This is caravel from Ashahi. And this is dual lumen catheter from Ashahi uh, Sasuke. Now, uh, next agenda wire selection shape control. So there are lots of Ashai uh, Sion technique wear, like filter series, Gaia series, and Sion series. And Gaia has got Gaia first, second, third, with different tip load. And now Gaia next has come. Uh, next is stiff, non-tapered jacketed wear, like Pilot. And stiff, tapered jacketed wear, like Conquest Pro 9, 12, and 820. And then externalization wear, like uh, RG3 or Viper wear. Now, next is negotiating collateral channel. So there are four types of collateral channel, septal, epicardial, venous graft, and lima. So before doing the retrograde, you have to take a picture properly and select what are the collaterals you will go one by one. And before choosing ideal collateral, you have to see 
the angle between the collateral and the donor and recipient vessels, and there should be no tortuosity, no bifurcation, and clear connection. And there is bent to enter the collateral, acute bent, and for facilitating the sectoral crossing, small bent at tip. And for collateral uh, wires, if there's a visible connection, would prefer C on. If extremely tortuous, then we should prefer SUO3. And if it's invisible or not clear, then filter XTR, pilot, or filter FC. And basics of negotiating collaterals are take proper view, take proper wear, and be very gentle, and always use support catheter. Now, wire crossing options. One is retrograde wire cross. Uh, take the retrograde wire, hit the CTO from back, cross it, reach proximal lumen, then go to intricate guide catheter, and uh, and then uh, intricate balloon over the retrograde uh, wire, and dilate the lesion, and stent. Finish. Next is kissing wire technique. If retrograde wire fails to go, you can also take the uh, uh, intricate wire, kiss the retrograde wire, and it might guide you to the distal true lumen. Next is reverse card, which is very uh, popular now. When the retrograde and intricate care are in, in, in different plane, uh, then you put, put a balloon on the intricate wire, in, uh, um, increase the dissection plane, and then try to reach that dissection pain by retrograde wear, and then go to the proximal tool lumen. So this is an example, RCA dominant, a CTO with a blunt stump with a branch, and left wing uh, coronary stent patent, and uh, LED stent was patent. Uh, it is giving collateral to RCA by septal branch, LCS is non-dominant. So summary, this is RC CTO, proximal stump blunt with a side branch, no calcification, bending less than 45 degree, CTO length is 20 millimeter, and there was a previous attempt. So JCT score was three. So first I tried integrally again by filter XT A wear with a macro catheter, but failed to puncture. Then I took a Concus Pro 9 where successfully punctured the proximal cap. But went distally in the false lumen. And even after trying several attempts, can't reach the distal true lumen. So decided for retrograde approach, hooked LED with XB 7 French guide catheter, crossed through cell branch to RCPDA with microcatheter and Sion where and then so planned for contemporary reverse card. Inflated integrately 2.5 into 15 balloon in distal CTO and tried to aim the balloon with retrograde Gaia second wear. But could not connect the integrate dissection plane created by the balloon with the retrograde Gaia second wear after several attempts. Then I changed to uh, retrograde wire to Concus Pro 9 and try to bring it in the same anterior decision plane and confirm the two were in the same plane by rotational angiography. I don't have, I was then. After confirming the two were in the same plane, I took a bigger balloon, 3 into 15, to enlarge anterior space and aim it with retrograde wire. Even then, the retrograde wire failed to pass proximally. But I was confident that there should be a connection between the two planes. So now I stepped down and I changed it to slippery filter XTR wire. After some maneuvering, succeeded to pass in proximal RCA to integrate yeah. RCA guide yeah. catheter. From now? Uh, no, no. From now, after just after 15 minutes. And, and, and took the retrograde wear, yeah. uh, 
running short of time we will go to straight way to the chairperson i would like to request uh, dr professor shams manwar senior consultant cardiology ever care hospital to have his uh, remarks on this deliberation hi this is dr dagubati if you wanted me to give my talk and uh, yeah, 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 yeah definitely will yeah uh, so i think i'll quickly do it at soon as possible to share okay thank you thank you you can see my screen now right yes. can you see my screen yes you can we, we can yeah we can okay uh so see to your complications very quickly i'll go through these uh, the most important complication is obviously death mi and need for emergency bypass surgery and the minor complications such as vessel perforation aortic root dissection and damage to the donor artery and collaterals but if you look at it that uh, death cabbage and mi constitute about 3 to 5% so i think it is very good to uh, to let the patients know and majority of them are still non qmi so i think it is still not a bad thing to perform uh, ctos in uh, uh, in centers that are uh, centers of excellence that would be called and the septal perforation is i think about 3.8% and a side branch compromise can occur in as well and collateral injury to other vessels is about 5 to 10% so i think uh, you know these are the most important complications that we have to look at and how we can try to reduce the rupture of uh, small vessels or uh, septals and uh, thrombosis of the donor artery and uh, prolonged ischemia and sometimes causing atrial So I think uh, you know we'll show some cases. However, there sometimes septal ruptures can happen into uh, a ventricular uh, septum, and uh, those are the can cause hematomas and uh, even LVOT obstruction that has been reported by people. And uh, fortunately, I did not have any of those uh, scenarios. But the most common uh, complications that we said is on the left side, which is the coronaries and perforations and main vessel. the distal vessel and donor and which can result in cardiac tamponade and how we can quickly manage is very important on the other hand which we normally ignore are the extra cardiac complications such as radiation injury keeping an eye on the uh, amount of gray that the patient is receiving and the uh, vascular complications and contrast induced nephropathy is also a important so equipment loss and treatment i think is uh, uh, most of us are quite careful but uh, still it can happen in the open cto registry that we did actually how what are the complication rates of perforation is about 6% and clinically significant perforation is about 4.9% and you know based on the jcto score the higher the score the more complications that can happen and i think that's where you have to be very careful in those patients so here is a 75 year old man with uh, you know angina and anterior wall hypokinesia and uh, ischemia on the stress test who comes in and as uh, you see there's a uh, lad is being supplied by collaterals from the right 
And uh, so you, you know, it's a typical as uh, we have seen the uh, great presenters uh, uh, prior to me talking about both anti-grade and retrograde approaches. And the CTO was performed very well with the retrograde approach, as well as there is a wire and anti-grade and the diagonal and the circumflex as well. So then uh, successfully stented the mid to proximal LED. And as you can see in the next picture, actually, there is some, uh, maybe some weakness in the uh, uh, LED that there is some blush that is ongoing. So this actually continues to go on and uh, results in cardiac tamponade and patient actually had uh, uh, a uh, pigtail catheter and drain. So I'll go back one slide and I'll show it to you. And uh, so here is the LED that is performed uh, quite well in the caudal view. Uh, probably if you pay attention to it, just at the bifurcation of that septal, I mean, at the diagonal and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, LED carina, there is a blush right there. So I think what we should have done is uh, immediately balloon tamponaded it and then looked out and what actually is going on. So I think sometimes we get caught up. So, oh, I opened up the CTO very successful and did not pay attention to that small uh, blush and that resulted in cardiac tamponade in here too. So now it is very clear this uh, LED perforation, balloon sealing was done and a graft master was placed and, but still he still has perforation, you know, going on. So where is the leak? And that the leak probably is a little bit more proximal to it and at the, exactly at the carina and that's where the marker is showing. And so uh, another graft uh, master was placed in the diagonal and the balloon in the LED. And uh, so that actually led to a good uh, ceiling. And uh, this is the final picture where there is no more uh, uh, perforation or blush that you can see. So septal perforations, again, I think are very common in retrograde, uh, peer, you know, uh, uh, PCI for CTO, but the, most of them are clinically inconsequential, no therapy is required. And uh, I think that is the biggest thing is I think God is always watching uh, for our patients and on us. Uh, but some, sometimes the septal uh, perforations are uh, drastic because we keep injecting a lot with the micro catheters. And uh, you know, this is a patient who had a successful uh, reverse cart with subsequent stenting from the PLV to the ostium. And angiography after uh, stent implantation, you can see that in the base uh, that there is a perforation which is uh, kind of circled over there. And uh, so you can uh, see what happens to it. And uh, while we are waiting and after 10 minutes, and uh, this is what happens and uh, it keeps on uh, worsening. And uh, so after 20 minutes, I don't think now I would wait even for 20 minutes. As you see, uh, if it is increasing for five, 10 minutes, immediately you know, call for a coil and uh, here uh, you can use, uh, use whatever you want, Azure or Procreate, and uh, we use a Procreate catheter with the tip injection and uh, coiled it, and, and it was good. Sometimes you have to coil both uh, from the anti-grade and retrograde as well. And uh, so here it uh, looked okay, and uh, then we left it alone, okay? So very important to realize that. Uh, so this is another CTO that uh, we were able to open it up and here, uh, we were not able to then uh, post dilate the stents and uh, properly and uh, with NC and uh, strong guide support was required. And uh, so you know, my fellows lost the wire. So we recrossed it was easy because now it is stented. And while doing that uh, aggressive uh, manipulation of the guide catheter, you can see that there is an aortic uh, root uh, dissection. And uh, this aortic uh, root dissection uh, is uh, can be drastic. And uh, the most important part of it is don't uh, be uh, fearful, immediately get a large stent and we'll bring it back to the ostium of the uh, uh, RCA into a little bit into the iota and then it uh, completely heals off. So aortic root dissection is classified into class one, two, three. You know, uh, class three is the worst one, which is more than four centimeters into the aortic root and less than four is class two. And uh, class one is uh, just limited to the coronary cusp alone. And, so the most common is uh, uh, iatrogenic, we cause it, and uh, guiding catheter trauma is uh, most of the commonest one that I have seen. Well, how do we minimize and, uh, uh, I mean, uh, minimize contrast injection, minimize uh, uh, too much of guide you manipulation uh, when it is uh, deep, and uh, consider a five-inch child catheter, <clears throat> and, and uh, stent uh, intracoronary entry portion dissection. You know, you can use covered stents if you want in that area as well. But uh, uh, follow up with the TE or a multi uh, uh, scan CTE is, reply, is uh, required in these people. So here is another RCA CTO. 
and uh, so I'll show it to you. And obviously, call, uh, cross with the Miracle Six, and then uh, which was not successful. Then the Conquest Pro, and finally, we were able to establish a flow through this. And uh, but the most important part I want to see here is the wire position in this screen, and here is the wire wire position. So wire was actually in the PLP, and then it was pushed to PDA. So pushing pushing and pulling the wires should be avoided absolutely you know once you cross it make sure your wire is in the screen of your uh, uh, ii and uh, don't actually keep on uh, uh, changing it so here again uh, one more time another wire is uh, you know but uh, hopefully if you saw it in the previous picture here itself you could see that there's a blush in the postlateral branch uh, perforation again and distal wire perforation and uh, then uh, that uh, became bigger because it was not recognized. And uh, so then actually uh, balloon tamponade was done, but it was too distal. It is, I think it is now we are uh, making it uh, worse by actually putting the balloon in the place where there was already a perforation and uh, creating it much bigger. The risk of coronary perforations, uh, 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 older age, female gender, severe calcification, and whenever you use high balloon stent to arterial vessel ratio, and obviously, in CTOs, it becomes stiff wire, hydrophilic coated wires, and retrograde approach by epicardial collaterals and uh, use of any other uh, adjunctive devices. By Steve Ellis uh, from Cleveland Clinic, he classified class one to three. Three is actually the, uh, the perforations are associated with higher rate of uh, hemodynamic compromise, such as tamponade. And I showed it to you how to manage them is quickly. Uh, tap them if need be, but balloon tamponade, I think, is the first step. And I think actually uh, getting a covered stent, if it is proximal, getting a, 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 a embolization, fat, coil, or thrombin for a distal wire perforations, I think, is the most important. I always call cardiac surgeons to be on the backup, actually, just in case if something worse happens in that. Now, while the devices are in place, uh, do not uh, reverse anticoagulation, but when you're ready to take out everything, uh, and uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, protamine is very good in uh, reversing and uh, please follow this uh, uh, algorithm from uh, Umbrilacus. And uh, here is another mid-LAD CTO, anti-grade failure, which was uh, uh, successfully opened up with a uh, uh, reverse uh, uh, retrograde uh, ca catheter uh, uh, entry was very good. And this is the final result. And this, while taking the final results, always keep an eye on also on the collateral injection. So uh, here is the right coronary artery. Now you can see that there's a big thrombus in the distal right. And uh, so that was aspirated with the uh, export catheter. And this is what we were able to take out. And, uh, and sorry, the final picture looks like very good RCA. So thrombin injection is very, uh, uh, I mean, a thrombus formation is also an important point. Never ignore the contralateral vessel and uh, might 10 key points how to tackle is uh, number one, defi definite progress for su final success should be accomplished with fluoroscopic time of less than uh, 60 minutes or five grade. So, you know, what is the definite progress? And pro progress is anti grade approach. You're able to get the anti grade wire across. In retrograde, a successful delivery of a retrograde corset through collateral channel. This much, if you are not here, uh, stop it. Uh, we can bring the patient back. Uh, prepare detailed PCI strategies uh, without the uh, panning and uh, based on high quality angiograms and maybe a little bit of uh, rotation of uh, the II will reduce uh, the, uh, uh, the radiation to be just concentrated on that part of the skin. Uh, measure uh, ACT and keep it within your target range. I would normally say about 250 to 300. I think that, that uh, you can prevent thrombus formation and constant uh, maybe uh, aspirating and flushing the guide catheters is also on the, especially on the contralateral side, might be saving you some from thrombus formation. Once you're ready to, uh, once you crossed and you're getting ready to stent and balloon uh, uh, the CTO vessel. So, uh, please keep make sure everything is on the same screen, the distal wires uh, perforate and uh, you have to make sure that you are not uh, pushing the wire and pulling it back too much. Using uh, guiding catheters more than seven French without a stiff and uh, tapered tip, I think is what uh, probably will help us uh, rather than uh, uh, ex uh, pushing the uh, uh, guide, uh, six French guide for too much, you know, so and you can uh, cause iotic root dissections on that place. Do your best uh, to identify the entry point into CTO. IOS examination should be done when an anti-grade uh, wire passes through the occlusion into a distal side branch. It is very helpful to know where you are. 
and uh, use the uh, spring coil wires as your first choice of uh, channel, collateral channel tracking and when vessel closure is not clear at all. Knuckle wiring is the safest uh, when vessel course is not clear and I'm sure Dr. Uh, Kalyan Sundra might have shown you some of these cases as well. And osteal LAD CTO has the highest risk of serious complication. Consider ca cardiac surgery first and then uh, if not, a stent uh, uh, delivery into circumflex should be guaranteed just in case. So, uh, take home messages, detect perforation early, don't ignore subtle findings, inflate a balloon to stop bleeding and pericardiocentesis if a hemodynamic gland stable, treat the cause, large vessel perforations, uh, covered stent, distal wire perforations, fat uh, embolization of coil, and uh, most importantly, remain calm and communicate with the team and make sure the surgeon is always for, available for backup. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and I, I'm really happy to take any questions. Thank you, Dr. Dagubati, for your very brief and uh, precise presentation. Uh, if somebody wants to have any comment or question on this topic, particularly from the chairpersons or from the panelists, uh, they should be given the priority first. Dr. Khaled Mohsen, please wrap up as because time uh, we are one and half hour behind. To be uh, so uh, I think one of the chairpersons can come. Yes. Please. Yes. Uh, yes. Or uh, with some concluding remarks. No chairperson. So one of the senior panelists, we can we can have some remarks and conclude among no, the from president. You can take. Yeah. Okay. okay. President of BSCI, Professor Fadur Rahman, can you please. Thank you very much. Last of all, <laughs> anyway, it is a very good and interesting <laughs> practical session, especially considering the PCI of CTO. As you know, about 10% of the PCI are the CTO, but he remember three things on the selection of the patient and selection of the hardware and the expertise. First of all, if we consider why we open the CTO, then there is, there is a reduction of the angina, increased LB function, there is reduction of the arrhythmia, reduction of the CABG. But all these, which we consider in the opening of the CTO, all, everything is related to the ischemia. So first of all, if you want to do a CTO, that, that selection. My, my concluding point is that we have to select whether the CTO lesion is ischemic or non-ischemic. If it is non-ischemic, I think don't go for the PCI. But if it is ischemic producing problem with the patient, then you should consider the CTO PCI. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, our president. Uh, it's my honor and privilege. Now I will go for the final session because there are some short of times. Our professor Ashok, Ashok Shet Sir is everything and he has another program. Now I just, just one minute short for brief introduction. This session, our final session, left hand and back progression is chaired by Professor 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 Ashok and Dr. Imad Shivan and Dr. Oru Kallan Sundara. And our, my commander, Professor Mish Jamaluddin sir also is here. And now our, our uh, expert panel is Professor Khandakar Kamul Islam, Professor Ekwim Reja and Professor Dr. Mahmoud Shahabuddin and Dr. Jihad Khan, Dr. Ashok Dutta and Dr. Giman Bode. I just quick to, quick switch, switch over to our topics. I, we are rescheduled due to time constraint. Our first talk will be given by last hour Secretary General Professor Mr. Jamaluddin sir. Now I am requesting Professor Ashok said, as you know, he give, uh, can you share your slides, sir? Yes, sir. 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 Yes